What's up guys? It's Medigex21, the, I don't know, another computer building video thing. I don't know. Um, so I recently have been working on my home server computer. Uh, I did an upgrade on it. It's probably been up for two or three weeks at least now. Um, and I just, I keep tinkering with it. Uh, I, I recorded everything on my upgrade. Originally I had a uh, G4400. Um, it was a dual core CPU. I think I had eight gigs of RAM in it. It, it was really a minimalistic thing. It was kind of a, an accumulation of parts. Um, I ended up, I needed a big case because I was running multiple graphics cards on another project. And then as time went on, I, I got rid of the graphics cards. But then from other projects, I had a pretty decent amount of one terabyte hard drives left over. And uh, I was like, well, you know, I might as well just put those all together and I can just have some home storage for as I'm moving files and saving stuff and backing stuff up. And one thing led to another. Next thing I knew, I was running a couple of VMs on it and, and more files. And I was like, well, this project became more than just a little thrown together thing. Uh, so I decided to upgrade it and uh, I think you guys will like it. Um, let's uh, I'm just going to show you the video and then we'll we'll talk about the parts afterwards. Well, uh, I hope you like it. I know I know the case is still a little bit dusty. I did clean it up. It, it looks cleaner than it does in the video, um, but I mean, it, it was pretty dusty, you know, beforehand. Um, so the parts that I went with, um, I, I had to obviously change my motherboard and the CPU because I, I needed, um, the previous motherboard didn't have any video out. So even though the G4400 did have it, it's in own integrated graphics, um, the motherboard I ended up with had no no type of video out so i i always had to have a graphics card in it because even when i would run it without a graphics card sometimes it would work and then maybe after a day or two it would just stop working and the only way to get it to boot back up and actually work is if i put a graphics card in booted it shut it off took the card out and then boot it again and then it could run for a week or run for a day so I, I decided to go with the cpu that had integrated graphics because the uh the card 
hear me out on this. The card that I had laying around that I was using was a GTX 1080. And I don't, I don't want a 1080 just sitting in a case. Uh, I'm going to try to flip that, and I'll use that for parts for other projects. Uh, to, so to leave a 1080 just in a server computer for the occasional time that I have to like plug into a monitor, which is pretty rare. I, I pretty much remote log into it all the time. Um, so I wanted something with integrated graphics, and I, I know that there's really good Intel CPUs. I certainly could have gotten Intel. I decided to go with a Ryzen-based motherboard because uh, if, if I change my patterns later on or I change something later on, um, I knew that by going with a 450 motherboard, I would have an upgrade path available. Um, so, th so that's why I went with, with the Ryzen. I know there's, there's better Intel choices out there, but I feel like for my progression, a, uh, the Ryzen was the best way to go. So for the parts, we went with a uh, ASRock B450M Pro 4. I've used that motherboard quite a few times on other projects and I've always been very happy with it. Everything in it for overclocking and XMP profiles, RAID, all that stuff just kind of seems to work and I've always been happy with it. So that's, that's why I went with the ASRock board. The CPU, I went with the Ryzen 3400G. The reason why I went with that was because it gave me four cores and eight threads, but it also gave me that dedicated graphics that I needed. I know that I could have gone with a Ryzen CPU that had more cores, which would help me more on the VMs and other projects, but then I would have had to put a graphics card in there. I felt that because of the projects that I'm working on now, four cores and eight threads was a fine start. And if I do need to upgrade later on, I can always get a better Ryzen CPU and just a really cheap graphics card to put into it. So I feel like this was the best start for me at the, the lowest starting price without getting too low. The, the 3200G, um, although it's a good CPU, um, we, we missed those extra threads and it was only, only $50 more for the to make it four core and four thread. For the RAM, I went with G-Skill, I think it's AGs, A-E-G-I-S, AGs, something like that. Uh, you guys are going to kill me, I know. They're 8 gig uh, DIMMs. They're 2400 megahertz. I know that they are certainly not the best as what I could do, but one of them was actually left over from the previous server. And then on Newegg, there was a sale for, uh, I, th I think they were like 25 or $26 with um, free shipping. So I ended up, uh, I wanted to pick up three more, but when I was checking out, it kicked one of them back because apparently you could only buy two at a time. And I didn't realize it until a full checkout. Um, and, and I only got two of them. So right now the build that you see only has two sticks in it, but actually the fourth one that I need, because the third one's sitting on a shelf, I can't run three. Um, the, the fourth one is actually coming today. So when you see all of my project builds, all of my VMs and stuff later on, I'll actually be running 32 gigs of RAM. And I do have the XMP enabled. It gives a little bit extra, nothing crazy, but it makes me happy. The case is a Rose Will Wolf Alloy. Uh, again, I needed, a, I needed a big case because I was running multiple graphics cards on a different project. So I went with, with that case. I knew I could put all those cards into it. I ended up getting lucky because it gave me a path later on for my server build because as you can see, I have tons of slots that are very easy to access slots for my hard drives. So that, that made the server project that I'm doing now, I didn't have to go buy another case. I didn't have to change my case. I had the case laying around. The RAID card is an IO Crest SI PEX40064. It's a PCI Express 2.0 card. I just needed something to connect the hard drives to. Uh, I, I never really hit the max read and write speeds through my network and stuff, so I wasn't really worried about getting the best and most expensive. I just needed something that was going to connect to all of my uh, hard drives because the 450M only has four SATA uh, plugs, and one of the M.2s will share the third, I think it's the third PCI Express lane or the third SATA lane or something. I, I know I don't, I'm not a techie jargon guy, so I can only... Uh, if I use that M.2, then I can't use one of the fourth ones. Short story long is um, I needed a RAID card regardless because I have a total of six hard drives plus whatever operating system drive that I'm using, which initially I had put the Patriot Scorch M.2. It was a 256 SSD. I ended up having to RMA it. 
Uh, you will you saw in my previous build, that's the SSD that I went with in my gaming rig. Well, that's what happened. It was supposed to be for my server build, ended up not working. I had to RMA it. So things went all over the place. So my SSD, my Kingston SSD, which is 240 gig SSD that was in my gaming computer, uh, I cloned to the M.2 so that I could put the M.2 in my gaming computer, which left me a 240 gig SSD laying around as opposed to the 128 that I was using early in this server project build. So I'm now using a Kingston 240 gig SSD, but I, if I had it my way, I would be using the, the Patriot, uh, what is it, Patriot Scorch M.2. I would be using that, but I ended up with the Kingston, which is still a really good SSD, and I'm happy with it. Power supply. Power supply is the Rosewill Hive 1000 watt. It's semi-modular power supply. It's the same power supply that I'm using in my gaming computer. Again, from previous projects, I had a lot of these laying around. So I was able to use one for my gaming computer and I was able to use one on the server computer. I like having the semi-modular power supplies because if I end up adding more hard drives, I can always plug more cables in. If something happens to a cable, I can just change it. I have lots of them laying around from previous projects. So I, I like those power supplies. I looked around to see if you could still get them. I don't think you can. I know when I got them, they were only like $80, but I haven't been able to really find them now. So luckily I got all my extra cables still laying around, so I should be good for quite a while. And then for the hard drives, I've got six Western Digital um, one terabyte hard drives. I believe they're all 64 megabyte cache uh, and 7200 RPM. Those are the ones, they were all left over from previous, previous projects, from other gaming computers, other home builds, just other things. I had a bunch of them laying around, and six was the good mix of what could fit in my case, and what I could work with. So I'm, I'm happy with having the six of them. I'm sure over time, as my projects increase or as size of files increase, I'll, I'll probably have to change those from, from one terabytes to twos or fours or eights or, or whatever I end up doing. But it's a good start because uh, for this server build, a lot of these things that I'm using are leftover parts. And that's what kind of leads me into some of our videos you guys are gonna see later on. The projects that I'm doing are projects that I, I think you guys would be interested in and I think they're projects that some of them I think are things you should be doing. Uh, I, I think that for people who are doing things that they have lots of files or they want to back up files or they need to move files to other computers, there's no reason why you shouldn't have a home server. It's pretty, they're really simple to set up. I know that when I looked at the cost of what my server was to build, we're approaching that thousand dollar mark, but you can you can do these same things on way lower end hardware and or just accumulations of old hardware. In the future, some of the videos that you're gonna see is I wanna show you guys how I set up my Pi Hole. It's a DNS ad blocker. It's great, I've been using it for a month now. In fact, my server, I started to work on those videos yesterday. So my server is actually not on my network right now. And all night long and so far throughout today, I have noticed that my ad blocker isn't working. It's amazing on like apps and mobile websites and stuff, the amount of ads, the banners, the pop-ups, not really the pop-ups, but like the, the banners on the bottom. And then when you play games and the ads that come up during the games, the Pi-hole DNS blocks a crazy majority of those. And it's actually from using it for a month and then not having it on just for the day, I have dramatically noticed it just on the mobile side. So I'm gonna show a video on how I set mine up and I highly recommend anybody with just a computer laying around or, or the ability to add a VM on their network or something, I think you should really heavily look into it. It's, I, I like it, I really like Pi Hole. Another thing that I'm gonna try is uh, FreeNAS. I have actually never used FreeNAS, but I've looked at it, I've had a lot of interest in it and I think it will be a huge benefit to my setup um, but it's going to be a learning curve for me because I've never done it before. Nextcloud, on the other hand, I've been using Nextcloud for quite a few months and I have tinkered with it quite a few times and I do really like Nextcloud. Right now I use a couple of other third-party cloud services. They, they work great and I've got no problems with them. The catch is, is that they all have limited storage or you have to pay for storage. One of them, um, I'm paying for and then the other one I'm using for free because they both have their own little caveats that kind of both have what I need but not either one of them has everything that I need. With Nextcloud it is a good mix in the middle of lots of storage because it's my own server but then it's also free but then it also has a couple of the other 
little things that I find very easy to use and things that I like. For example, when I take a picture, I can quickly upload it through the app. Uh, one of the apps that I have does it very fast. The other one, I don't like how it does it, but Nextcloud seems to be a good mix in the two. So once I can get my Nextcloud all good to go, I probably won't be using those other cloud storages other than as a third tier backup for my stuff. I'm trying to think if there's other projects. I know that probably the next video after this one is going to be me installing CentOS onto my server as the base layer operating system in which all the VMs are going to run on. I went with CentOS because it's a uh, type 1 hypervisor, but this is something that's very new to me because I've been using um, Oracle, I think was the, the one that I was using, but that's a type 2 hypervisor. And Type 1 and Type 2 hypervisors are something very new to me. I didn't really know there was a difference to the two. So on those next videos, I think you guys will find them educational. If there's things that, that I learned, I'm sure there's things that, that you guys haven't known yet. Or I'm going to be telling you guys things that you're like, I've known this for years. What, what are you doing? But I'm rambling. I hope that you guys liked the video. I hope you are excited for the projects that I produce in the future. I know that there are projects that are keeping me super busy and, and I really like doing them. And I'm, I'm trying to make videos because I, I think that if I like them and I find them very interesting, you, you guys might too. They're not going to be like step-by-step -step tutorials, but I hope that there's enough information to it that it will help you guys on the projects that you guys decide to do later on. So I wouldn't call them like tutorials, but guideline assistant videos, maybe something like that. Hope you guys liked the video. Thank you guys very much for being here. Don't forget, I, I need the likes because they make me feel good in the morning. Uh, share these with your friends and let me know what projects you're interested in as well. PyHole, Nextcloud, FreeNAS are my next three projects that I'm thinking about. But if you guys think of other things that, that I should do, please let me know what you're in interested in. And maybe I'll look into those projects as well too. Thank you guys for your time. Have a great evening.